Hey guys, how's it? How you doing? How's it? How's it going? Everything good? I don't know what's going on with uh, with YouTube. Let's see. Everything okay? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I don't know. This looks like there's a delay. Hold on. Oh, la, la, la. Yeah, so. Jesus name in Jesus name restore the buffering by the power of my God. Okay, let's see. I don't know. It's like so. YouTube's acting up. By the way, uh, Protestant, you here? I see you're here. You here? You guys can hear me. Tell. Let me know. You guys can hear me. It's good. <clears throat> For some reason, the discussion I did with the former Muslim yesterday, it was over three hours. But when I click, as one sister noted. It skips an hour. It starts around the two, uh, an hour later. Why is that? What's going on with YouTube? It was a three-hour discussion, and it says three hours, 16 minutes. But then when I click on it, it starts an hour later. Did we lose an hour? How is that possible? So it will compile, though. It's not lost. So it's going to take a while. Because it says three hours and 16 minutes. It did record, Thomas. It was live stream. <clears throat> so you did watch the full three hours? Glory to Jesus Christ. But praise Jesus. Pray we don't lose that hour. Praise we don't lose that hour, right? And by the way, as you can see, I wore my Bruce Lee shirt today because we're going to go into battle. Yeah, that would be tragedy if they omitted an hour of my discussion. It would be actually evil and wicked if they omitted an hour of my discussion because it was a three-hour, 16-minute intense discussion where this young man, this former Muslim, I can't mention his name, who now worships the triune God who's in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, he asks amazing questions. He's very literate, very educated, and he asks excellent questions. In fact, let it be a challenge to us Christians. It's not to put anyone down. Let his questions challenge you and convict us to even shame. Here's a man that comes out of Islam, and he's asking the right questions, and he's asking deep questions, questions I don't even hear from Christians who've been in the faith for years. The man is hungry, and when he learns it, you know he's going to be a theological, spiritual beast for the glory of Jesus, destroying Islam, wrecking Islam, right? Now, contrast that to my very late night session. I had a session around two in the morning with Taylor Stewart. Pray for Taylor Stewart. Pray in Jesus' name that the power of the blood of Jesus will wash him, the Holy Spirit set him free. <clears throat> because I thought, I thought we were progressing, but from last night, he took one step forward and 10 steps back. He's back confused because I see that as an extreme case of demonization. Protestant, it's what the former Muslim became a Christian. Okay. Is everything good? See, even Luisa's connection is doing bad. See, Satan's acting up. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, cleansing us and Holy Spirit filling us in Jesus' name. Okay. <clears throat> so, yesterday, it was a very frustrating discussion with Taylor Stewart because... He took one step forward, 10 steps back, so confused, discombobulated, right? Asking the same questions, responding to over and over again, not understanding answers because, again, this is not to attack. His ability to comprehend is impaired greatly, and I believe not just because of mental faculties, but also because of demonization. When Satan sees he's about to lose you, <clears throat> he does anything and everything. To try to stop you from escaping his snares, to ensnare you even worse. Because he doesn't want you to escape and fall in love with the true Jesus. So it was pretty bad last night with him. You could see I got frustrated and I said, dude, we're wasting each other's time. But pray, remember, the Holy Spirit is almighty to save and entrust them to the hands of the Holy Spirit. So with that said, 
Father, bless this session for the glory of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Destroy the attacks of Satan. Rebuke Satan. <clears throat> and by the precious holy blood of your son, the Lord Jesus, cleanse us and wash us. Flood us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, our shield against Satan <clears throat> and his kingdom. And may the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us of our sinful, wicked, filthy flesh. Cleanse our minds, <clears throat> the thoughts of our minds, our mouths, the words of our mouths, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our bodies, purified in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, and purify our loved ones. Purify my daughters, cleanse them, purify them in the blood of Jesus, and Father, fill us with the Spirit. Seal us by the Spirit, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, anoint this session. <clears throat> Destroy attacks against my throat. Rebuke Satan who's trying to hinder me. Strengthen my voice and fill my throat, my lungs, and my chest with the breath of life, with life from your Holy Spirit. And anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants, Father. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And anoint me to recall the facts and scriptures to forget nothing that I've memorized by the power of the Holy Spirit, to perfectly recall them and interpret them perfectly by the power of your Spirit and illuminate us by your Spirit. Fill us with wisdom from your Spirit, understanding from your Holy Spirit, and destroy attacks in our minds from the evil one. Rebuke Satan, Father. Lord Jesus, rebuke the evil one. Holy Spirit, keep the evil one far away from us and our loved ones. <clears throat> and give me perfect self-control for your glory, for the glory of the Father and the Son. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, rebuke the sons of Satan. Rebuke these demons. Silence them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And please take over the session, Father. Lord Jesus, take over the session. Holy Spirit, take over the session. And destroy distractions and grant me clarity, thought, and speech. And bless us, Father. Lord Jesus, bless us. Holy Spirit, bless us. In Jesus' name. For your glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Bless the internet connection in Jesus' name. Ya Allah, Father, Holy Spirit. Let's see who this guy is. This might be a Muslim. Kulthum. Guys, we may have a son of Satan distracting. Sorry. In Jesus' name. Pray that the Spirit will fill me with passion and fire and that you'll be blessed because we're going to school Shibri Ali. Invite more people. Let me just see who this guy is. You notice it's not a coincidence as I am praying, asking the Holy Spirit to take over for the glory of Jesus. A son of Satan, a demonic distraction, right? Let me see. If it's a Muslim, it's not going to last long. We'll see. Sorry about that. Hamdi, all right, well, let's see if you are looking for truth. Hold on. All right. We're going to deal with it. Now, I've already taken notes because Shibrali, out of embarrassment, out of embarrassment, did a review. Uh, Hamdi, that's what all Muslims say who want to attack the Christian faith. Because unless truly the Holy Spirit is convicting you and working in you. Look at this. Who are you? <laughs> are, you are you Muhammad's father, Satan? So, so, so. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, listen, did your mother do uh, muta with 20 Shia so that she produced a bastard yes, like you? Yes, sir. Look at a stupid, stupid, dumb bastard. We spit on Muhammad. Pit on Muhammad. Scum. Stupid bastard. See? And you want to respect these people? Guys, do you really, really blame me? Do you really blame me? for treating these filthy demonic dogs the way they deserve to be treated. Am I wrong? No, brother, but I don't see the love of Jesus in you. And I just, please, please, if you're one of those, please leave my YouTube channel. Please leave my YouTube channel. Lord Jesus, destroy the buffering and distractions. We plead the blood of our God and save the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Hamdi uh, Abudan, real quickly, let me tell you something. Here's the trick. Of Muslims, unless a Muslim is sincerely seeking, because Holy Spirit is convicting that Muslim and drawing him to the feet of Jesus. Here is the deceit, trickery of Muslims, because their God is the greatest of all deceivers. They'll pretend to be innocent. Ah, oh, no, I want to know about Christianity. I want to learn about Jesus. Why you believe he's God? Because they're afraid to admit that they're here to attack and blaspheme, lest we destroy their prophet and their God by the power of Jesus. So they pretend, I'm seeking, I have answers. 
Been there, done there, got the T-shirt, buddy. You may think I was born yesterday. And I keep telling people, I keep telling people, I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before. Protestant was born yesterday. So you can't pull a fast one on me. Now, with that said, are you ready? Chibrali, I think it was last week, did a debate review. He reviewed his debate with Jay Dyer because obviously, obviously, Chibrali was embarrassed and he knew he got humiliated and he didn't do good against Chibrali, uh, against Jay Dyer by the grace of the Lord Jesus. And he had to go into damage control. And he also was aware of our post debate review and he was embarrassed. So I promised myself that I was going to listen to it and do a series of sessions refuting his arguments and again to demonstrate. And let me be very upfront. Let me be very honest. I'm not here to be politically correct and I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive, but I will call a spade a spade and I will call out sons of the devil, agents of the devil who masquerade as humble servants of righteousness in order to attack the true God, blaspheme the Lord Jesus, and attack the Bible. Shabir Ali is one of them. Okay. In these sessions, I'm going to provide further proof Shabir Ali is a dishonest charlatan. And you can send him this video and say, Sam Shumun is calling you out. Put him in his place, debate him, and silence him if you're that ed educated and Sam Shumun is a peon. Put me in my place. Right? Send me packing. Discredit me. But he knows better because he knows he can. His God can't help him. His prophet can't help him. He knows by the power of Jesus Christ, I'll end his career and expose him finally and completely. What's happening, Taylor? How are you? Taylor, do me a favor. We're talking about Islam. I can call you later if you want to have a discussion. Taylor Stewart is here, our talk block. Welcome him. But do me a favor, Taylor. We're focusing on Shabir Ali. And his attacks on the Bible. So if you can do me a favor, focus with me, Taylor. Focus on the session. Learn. We can talk tonight. I'll call you later if you're interested. If you're still interested, we'll talk tonight. That's up to you. So, guys, that's what I'm going to do now. Now, we have someone saying he's a sincere Muslim who's looking for sincere answers. Okay. Hamdi, do me a favor. Be patient. Be patient. I'm going to be going through Shabir Ali's entire presentation point by point. Today I'm going to focus on what he said about the angel of the Lord and what he said about Justin Martyr. Now I'm writing notes down, but what I decided to do is play that clip. This clip is on his Facebook page. He did Facebook live stream. It's not on YouTube and it's also called Fair Use. See the demons again. The filthy dogs, scum of Satan. They won't stop. I'm going to probably shut down my YouTube. Yeah, let me shut down my... I'm going to shut down my Skype for now. Because this son of Satan, this bastard of the devil, following the spirit of his prophet, won't stop calling. So let me just do that. Okay, so we shut it down. Okay, now, for the rest of you, focus. Now pray, the Holy Spirit fill us. Pray, the Lord Jesus destroys distraction and help me now. Here's what I need you guys to do. Focus and do not get distracted and engage in side talk. Please, for the sake of the Lord Jesus, let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is fair use. I'm going to play that clip from his Facebook live stream. It's not on YouTube and it's fair use, right? The law allows us to take clips and play them to review them, okay? So are we ready? Are we ready to hear Shirali? And I'm going to give you the articles that go with this session. By the grace of Jesus Christ, I've written articles addressing all these topics. So what I'm going to say here, I have written responses. So I'm going to give you the links. But pray now for my success. Pray the Spirit helps me not to make mistakes and to bless you. And Hemdi and everyone else, please do not bring up irrelevant issues and get into side discussions. And Christians, constrain yourself because I want you to focus. You're here to learn. That's why you're here. So please focus. Okay, now let's play it. Here's the link. Fair use. This is not on use, use, YouTube. It's on li uh, Facebook live stream. Fair use. Okay, let's play it. Are you ready? I can't play it if you're not going to focus because I want to teach you. You ready? So help me to help you focus. Don't let the demons distract you. Yeah, Arfan. 
I left dozens of challenges to Shabir, and Shabir even noted it and made an excuse not to debate. So, Irfan, don't distract or you're going to get blocked. Irfan, pay attention unless you want to get blocked. Please. Okay, let's play it. Listen. Listen attentively. Okay, hold on. Known to be uh, divine persons like the Father, say that God experienced uh, death. And uh, if he died in the real sense of the word death, I'll get then who was uh, running the world uh, when he I'll stayed dead? That. God died. Um, if Already there were did. only two Listen. persons uh, in, in the Old Testament uh, who were known to be uh, divine persons like the Father and the angel of the Lord, as Jay was uh, stressing again and again, well, then that means that the uh, Christians had to wait until Jesus revealed himself himself in the New Testament uh, period as uh, the third person of the divine trinity. Did you catch that lie? Did you catch that shameless distortion representation and lie of the Christian faith? Let's see how many of you caught it. This is why you have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, illuminate me to focus, understand, and give me the power to live your word for the glory of Jesus. Did you catch that lie? Who caught it? How many of you caught it? I want to see who caught it. What did he say here? Did you understand what he said? He said, if in the Old Testament there are two divine persons, the Father and the angel of the Lord, and what did he say? No, Loris K., you didn't catch it. Let's see how many caught it. No, most of you didn't catch it. See, this is why it's sad. Let me play it again. Let's see. I want to see if someone caught it. No, see, none of you caught it. It's sad. You see why, guys, I'm like a strict disciplinarian? I'm that teacher you would hate when you're young, but when you grow up, you'd fall in love with me? You know why you fall in love with him? You say, man, that teacher was strict, not because he hated us, because he loved us so much. He was hard so we can get it and become successful in life. None of you got it. Nope, none of you got it. It has nothing to do with Jesus showing up. I'm going to play one more time. I want to see if you listen. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, death and uh, if he died in the real sense of the word death then who was uh, running the world uh, when he Pay stayed dead um, if there were only two persons in, in, in the Old Testament uh, who were known to be uh, divine persons like the Father and the Angel of the Lord as Jay was uh, stressing again and again well then that means that the uh, Christians had to wait until Jesus revealed himself in the New Testament uh, period as uh, the third person of the divine Trinity, but who caught it? Who caught it? No, Chloe, Jonathan, you're disappointing me. You, you didn't get it. Lake Trick is the one who got it. Only Lake Tricks got it. It's a sad thing. Only La Lake Tricks, I'll kiss your head. None of you got it except hope and faith and Lake Tricks. Did you hear what he said? You had to wait till Jesus appeared to reveal himself as the third person of the trinity none of you got it which disappoints me you didn't hear him right who said that we believe jesus is the third person of the trinity no you're still not getting it listen it has nothing to do with three in the old testament it has to do with what he said he said in the old testament was their father angel lord that means we have to wait until the new testament period for Jesus to reveal himself as the third person of the Trinity. And you guys didn't catch it. And this is why you're going to let him get away with murder. You got it now? Did you get it now? And you say this man is worthy of your respect. Can we be honest? Do you want me to be politically correct? Do you want me to be like other Christians, politically correct and nice and kiss up to him because that's what Jesus would want me to do? Or do you want me to be honest? Do you want me to be like Elijah? Do you want me to be like Paul, who insulted, berated, and humiliated blasphemers and worshipers of false gods? What do you want me to be? Because in the 21st century, in the West, if you don't act a certain way, no one will endorse you and invite you to their churches. Okay. Do you want me to be honest to God? And will you love me to be honest and transparent, to be as honest as I can for the glory of Jesus, even though I fail? How do you respect such a man like this? He's been debating Christians for over 20 years, over 20 years, maybe even more than 30. He's been debating Christians for over 20 years. Okay. He knows what we believe. And he's not misspeaking. 
Why then would you respect this man when he's read more books by Christians than many Christians and he's done more debates with Christians, some top-notch Christians, and most of his debates have been on the deity of Christ and the Trinity. He knows what we believe and he knows that we believe the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ and that angel becomes Jesus and Jesus is the second person, not the third person of the Trinity. Do you see the point? Do you see why he won't debate me? Because he knows I'll take him out without mercy spiritually. I'll go for a spiritual juggler and bury his prophet by the power of Jesus. You see? Okay. You understand now? Everyone focus now. Don't let Satan distract you. We'll get to Justin Martyr in a minute. Be patient. We'll get there. We're going to get to Justin Martyr. Again, a further example of how dishonest and wicked he is. Okay, but I wanted you to catch this because this is going to be a multi-part series and we're going to be killing several birds one stone. Not only will I show you that he's a snake, a charlatan that doesn't deserve your respect, I'll show you his distortions, how to decimate them by the power of the Holy Spirit, and then you're going to learn more about your Bible and church history. Okay, is that clear so far? So I can continue listening to the rest? Because he's got two more minutes, two more minutes of nonsense. I want you to hear for yourself because I wrote them down. But I said, you know what? Let me just play the clips. Okay. Okay. Let's let's play. Listen, though. You guys, that's, why do you think I keep saying don't be distracted? Stop with the texting here and get into side talks because then you're going to be focusing on the text and not on what I'm saying. And you're going to rob yourself of the opportunity to grow. You with me there? Do you see why I keep hammering? You guys think, man, what a mean guy. Come on, Sam. You're No, it's because this is life and death. We're talking about everlasting life. It's not a joke. When we die, we're going to stand before God, and we better make sure we know the truth and who God is and that we're loving him. This is not math class or, or real estate class where if I fail, oh, well, this is life and death. People's everlasting souls are at stake. We got to focus. That's why I'm a taskmaster. Okay, now let's listen to the rest of it. Hold your questions and focus. Let's continue. There are only three persons because if it works by this progression over time, then how do you know there's not a fourth one I'll up there somewhere that waiting to reveal himself uh, in some time or who may never reveal himself? So in that case, uh, saying that God is a trinity falls short because you cannot really say that God is a trinity. He may, in fact, be something like a quaternity. Um, and then turning to the history listen, of having here, Justin Martin, these listen. problems. Turn to the history, uh, I showed that there is a progression uh, of, of thought regarding this. Uh, Jay, I said, uh, did not reply uh, to my uh, statement that just the martyr, one of the uh, early church fathers, um, and said that Jesus was uh, like an angel. Um, and in which case, it was not it was not so quite clear that Jesus was God. Uh, but there was clearly a progression, uh, starting with the New Testament. There are developments going to the Apostle Creed, then to the Council of Nicaea, then a second Council of Nicaea, in which it is declared that the Spirit is to be worshipped along with the Father and the Son. Then uh, finally the Athanasian Creed. So clearly there is a historical uh, development here. Um, and then as for the scripture, uh, in, in some time, or, or who may never reveal it. Okay, listen to this. I'm going to take his entire doc and I'm going to dismantle it session by session by the power of the Spirit. Today we're going to focus on the angel of the Lord and Justin Martyr. I'm going to play what he said about Justin Martyr one more time. Please listen one more time. Uh, saying that God is a trinity falls short because you cannot really say that God is a trinity. He may, in fact, be something like a quaternity. Um, and then turning to the history of having explored these logical problems, turning to the history, uh, I showed that there is a progression. 
uh, of, of thought regarding this. Uh, Jay, I said, uh, did not reply uh, to my uh, statement that Justin Martyr, one of the uh, early church fathers, um, has said that Jesus was uh, like an angel. Um, and in which case, it was not it was not so quite clear that Jesus was God. Uh, but there was clearly what progression, uh, starting with the New Testament, there are developments going to the Apostle Creed, then to the Council of Nicaea, then a second Council of Nicaea, in which it is declared that the Spirit is to be worshipped along with the Father and the Son, then uh, finally the Athanasian Creed. So clearly there is a historical uh, development here. Um, and then as for the scripture... Okay. See, Jai caught it. See, now, folks, let me chide you in love. I'm now going to give you three articles. Are you ready? God willing, I have three articles on this topic. But here's what I want you to pay attention. I'm going to chide the Protestants here. If I'm using the right term. Sometimes I use the wrong term. Okay. You see why you Protestants need to know your church history? Protestants, I'm talking to you. And even Orthodox, Catholic, Assyrian Church, Coptic, even though they come from traditions that look to the church fathers, even many of them are ignorant. Okay. Do you see why you Protestants need to know your church history? The enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ, the enemies of the Bible, are quote mining our early church history, citing the church fathers, the apologists of the second and the third and the fourth and fifth centuries, quoting them out of context in order to use them to show, see, they didn't believe in the Trinity like you do. And you Protestants, because you do not know the church fathers, you are caught off guard and embarrassed and humiliated. In fact, the only person that I saw catch the mistake, not so much with Justin, Jai, he said, at the Second Council of Nicaea, that's when they decided about the deity of the Holy Spirit. Folks, that's nonsense. He's talking about the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD. He confused the Council, uh, Council of Constantinople with the Second Council of Nicaea. Jai caught it. Jai caught it. How many of you knew that? See, Angie said, oh, do you know why? Because you Protestants are disconnected from your spiritual forebears, your spiritual ancestors, and your history. Why? There are Protestants who study church history. There are Protestant scholars of church history. It's not simply a Catholic thing or an Orthodox thing. All Christians need to know their history. Right? You see the point? Okay. What we're going to do now is refute his lie, his shameless lie about Justin Martyr. So, guys, save these articles. I'm going to give you three articles. Folks, you are without excuse. God is supplying you with so much information. Okay, super squirrel. If you're a man, call me, and we're going to debate whether your God exists or he's a child of, or he's a doctrine of the devil and whether you are a satanic worshiper. A super squirrel, I'm going to embarrass you. The Trimurti is not the Trinity. Can you call me so I can embarrass you? Because I want to use you as an example of what I do to Shibri Ali in a debate. You wicked dog of the devil. Do you have the guts to call me? you got 10 seconds to answer. 10 seconds. 10. Are you going to call me? Nine, eight, seven, because I'm going to send you on your merry way looking for a nut. Are you going to call me so we can see if your mother's fake for giving birth to an animal like you or the Trinity's fake? Five, four, three, two, one. Yes or no? Get this bastard out of here, you filthy dog of the devil. Your mother should be in jail for giving birth to a beast like you. Get him out of here. All right. Don't you love it, guys? You see, I am so politically correct. You call my doctrine satanic, I'm going to insult your mother. Because your mother should be in jail for raising up an animal like you. No disrespect to animals or bastards. Okay? Okay, now, are you with me now? Guys, save. Save these articles. Save these articles. Here's the first article. God has blessed you that you live in a time where all this information is free. Guys, you have no excuse for not knowing your history. You know why? 
Internet has been used by God to flood us with such information that we have no excuse to being ignorant. Here it is. Here's the first article. I'm going to post it twice. Okay. That's it right there. Shibrali exposing his lies and dishonest debate tactics. So save that. Click on it. Save it. Now here's the second article. Justin Martyr. Here's the article on Justin Martyr. Okay. Now we're going to begin. Are you ready? This is it. This is the second article. Please, I'm going to post each link twice. There's going to be three articles. This is the second article. Now the third one. Now the third one. Okay. Guys, it's now between you and God. You're getting information for free. No one's charging you. Now it's between you and God that you now make the time to study the arguments, listen to these sessions, ask the Holy Spirit to help you absorb the information to become second nature. So now you can embolden and build up other Christians to save them from these sons of the devil. It's now in your hands. You have no excuse. Okay? So what we're going to focus on now is Justin Martyr's view of Jesus and the angel of the Lord and his relationship to Christ. Are you with me there? And it's going to be a multi-part series, by the way. It's going to be a multi-part series. Of course, Pat, I've given permission to everyone. You have absolute permission to upload my videos, even make clips of my videos on your YouTube channels, other social media platforms, to upload my articles and distribute them as long as you don't charge. Okay? Freely you receive, freely you shall give. Freely you receive, freely you shall give. Right? Matthew 10, verse 8. So that said, we're going to look at Justin Martyr. And all the information I'm giving you is in these articles. But before I do that, I want to quote something else he said in another debate. He had a debate with a Christian named Jonathan McClatchy. Are you with me there? Jonathan McClatchy. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah, by the way, support Smokey Saint. He's a brother who loves the Triune God. He, he's a brother in the Lord Jesus who worships the Trinity. He's got a YouTube channel he's building up, and he debates atheists, and he responds to Bart Ehrman. So go to his YouTube channel, subscribe to it, support, because we need more people doing this, more people getting on, involved on social media who are educated, know the material, and will accurately present the material by the power of the Spirit, and we need to support them because we do not have enough. We need more, and he's one of them. So support this brother. Smokey Saint. He's right there. Smokey Saint. Now, guys, you can watch the debate between Jonathan McClatchy and Shibir Ali. In that debate, which was years, three years ago, notice what he said about Justin Martyr. Are you ready? This is where I need you to pay attention. Are you ready? Because I'm going to read his distortion. Okay, let me know when you're ready, because now we begin. Now you have this as a background introduction. I'm doing multi-part multi sessions on his review that embarrassed him. And this is going to further embarrass him. So let's focus. Okay, this is what he said about Justin Martyr. And I'm going to tell you who Justin Martyr is. There is some question, in fact, about whether Justin can rightly be thought of as embracing a doctrine of the Trinity. My goodness, this man. He does not talk yet about the three divine beings, Father, Son, and Spirit, as being all equal and the three being one. He does say that God is worshipped first. The Shibri Ali's accusation of Justin Martyr. The Son second and the prophetic spirit third. But this again seems to suggest a hierarchy of divinity with God at the top and the others in lower places beneath him. And elsewhere, elsewhere, Justin claims that God alone is unchanging and eternal. And by the way, let me correct myself. This is Bart Ehrman that Shabir Ali was parroting. See, again, in my haste to try to refute Shabir Ali, let me again correct myself. Shabir Ali in the debate mentioned Bart Ehrman, and he said that Bart Ehrman suggests that just an arm, a, a martyr taught that Christians worship God, Jesus, Spirit, and angels. That was Shabir Ali's point. And he was getting it from Bart Ehrman's book, how Jesus became God. So now I'm quoting Bart Ehrman. So thank the Lord Jesus for saving me from error. Because again, in my haste to get to the, to the topic, I ignored the fact that Shabir Ali was claiming that Bart Ehrman, the book he read, How Jesus Became God, quotes Justin Martyr saying 
We Christians worship God, Jesus, Spirit, and angels, showing that even angels are worshipped. And obviously that means for Justin Martyr, Jesus and the Spirit are not equal to God just because they're worshipped, because even angels are worshipped and they're creatures. You understand what Shabir Ali is trying to prove? You understand his objection? If he can convince you that Justin Martyr taught, if he can convince you that Justin Martyr taught that Christians not only worship the Father, and the Son of Spirit, but also angels, then that would <clears throat> prove that for Justin Martyr, just because Jesus and the Spirit are worshipped, that doesn't mean they're equal to the Father in divinity, because even angels are worshipped and they're creatures. You understand what Shabir was trying to prove? You understand what he's trying to prove? Where did he get this from? From his reading the book by Bart Ehrman, How Jesus Became God. So he's getting this from his reading of Bart Ehrman's book, How Jesus Became God. So what I was quoting was Bart Ehrman. Now with that in the background, trusting the Spirit to save me from error, with that in the background, let me read again what Bart Ehrman suggests. See, he's saying Justin did not have a doctrine of the Trinity. That's Bart Ehrman's claim. He does not talk yet about the three divine beings, Father, Son, and Spirit, as being all equal and the three being one. He does say that God is worshipped first, the Son second, and the prophetic spirit third. This is now Bart Ehrman, from which Shabir Ali is parroting. And even when he parrots him, he doesn't do so precisely. Now, look, look what Ehrman goes on to say. But this, again, seems to suggest a hierarchy of divinity, with God at the top and the others in lower places beneath him. Why? Why does Ehrman think this? And elsewhere, Justin claims that God alone is unchanging and eternal, and the Son is subordinate to the Father. So too he indicates that Christians worship God, the Son, angels, and the Spirit. Clearly not a Trinitarian view. If nothing else, one can say that Justin represents a development toward the Orthodox, Christological, and Trinitarian paradoxes. So Shabir Ali, reading Bart Ehrman, parrots Ehrman and saying, Justin thought that Jesus was an angel, or like an angel, and not equal to God. And he said Christians also worship angels. See? Justin cannot be used to prove the Trinity. Now, are we ready for the refutation? Are we ready for the refutation as you're focusing and learning? Okay. Don't let Satan distract you. I want you to focus. Now, in that article I gave you, we're going to read Justin Martyr. And I give you links to Justin Martyr's own writings, which are available online in English translation. See, that's why I say... You guys are blessed. You live at a time, you live at a time in which all of this is free online. Newadvent.org, I believe, which has all the fathers online for free in English. Okay, this comes from Justin Martyr's first apology. First apology, chapter six. Did Justin Martyr say, and if the Mohammedan is distracting you, send him to Mecca. Did Justin Martyr say, that Christians worship angels with God, Jesus, and the Spirit. Did he say that? Now, what's sad is that Bart Ehrman reads the fathers in Greek, and he still shamelessly misrepresented Justin Martyr. Let me read what Justin Martyr said. Here's a citation. Hence are we called atheists. Now, i got to give you background, right? You guys want meat, right? Not just entertainment? That's why I'm wearing my Bruce Lee shirt. I'm going to Jeet Kundo, Shabir, and Bart Ehrman. Okay, now. Justin is talking in the context of the pagans are accusing Christians of being atheists. Yep, I also have that article, Michelle. Justin is saying the pagans accuse us Christians of being atheists. Why? Because we don't acknowledge Zeus and Hermes and Artemis. We deny their gods and goddesses, and they accuse us of being atheists for doing so. So that was the charge. Did you know that the pagans accuse the early church of being atheists? For denying the existence of the gods and goddesses. And did you know they also accused them of being cannibals? Because when they spoke about eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Christ, they thought that the Christians were actually consuming a physical body with blood in it. You know that? Side note. Okay, side note. Are you ready now for this, Protestants? Now, many Protestants do believe and the physical presence of Christ in the Eucharist. 
Why would the pagans accuse Christians of being cannibals for their statement that they're eating the flesh of Jesus and drinking the blood of Jesus if they didn't believe that the Eucharist was the body and blood of Christ? That when they prayed, the Holy Spirit took the bread and wine, and that bread and wine now is either conjoined to or becomes the physical body and blood of Christ. Something to think about, okay? Something to think about. And I'm saying this from a tradition that says that Christ is present in the Eucharist, but the, the bread and the wine are the symbols of his body and blood. So something to think about. Now, focus with me. Can we move on? Are you going to focus? Okay. Focus. Let's finish what Justin says. Please, for your benefit, why, why I want you to focus so you can learn, honestly, not because I want you to give me attention. Now, if you are a beautiful sister in the Lord, beautiful, love Jesus, filled with the Spirit, and you're a beautiful sister like Magdalene, then, yeah, I want your attention. Your attention I want. But if you're not a beautiful sister, I don't want your attention. I just want you to give Jesus attention. But anyway, let's focus. All right. Hence are we called atheists, and we confess that we are atheists so far as gods of this sort are concerned, but not with respect to the most true God, the Father of righteousness and temperance and the other virtues, who is free from all imp impurity, but both him and the Son. Now here's where Bart Ehrman misrepresents Justin Martyr, who came forth from him and taught us these things, and the hosts of the other good angels who follow and are made like him, and the prophetic spirit we worship and adore, knowing them in reason and truth and declaring without grudging to everyone who wishes to learn as we have been taught. Now, let me give you the part where it's being misinterpreted, mis misrepresented. So what did Justin Martyr say? What did Justin Martyr say? He goes, yes, as far as their gods and goddesses, we are atheists, but not when it comes to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship God and the, God the Father, who is free of all impurities, and we worship the Son and the prophetic spirit. We worship the Father, the Son, and the prophetic spirit. So where did Bart Ehrman get the notion that Christians also worship the angels, from which Shabir Ali parroted? Here you go. That part right there. Here's where it's being misunderstood. Guys, can you do me a favor? Mahdi Bakhri is the guy that's been calling me with demonic voices. Now, I just said, for the love of our Lord, do not be distracted by Satan. Why are you Christians so shameful that you can't constrain yourself and you succumb for satanic distractions like Mahdi Bakhri? Should I start blocking you Christians now? Okay, Jay, I got to block you. I'm sorry, brother. No hard feelings. Omar. Okay. Anyone who mentions uh, him, I got to block you. Okay. Who's next? Anyone else? No respect for the session or the rules. Who's next? Come on. I'm going to block Christians because you have no control. Shameful. Alpha, should I block you for giving him my... My Skype name? Come on. How many times I said, do not let Satan distract you? Did I say it more than three times? Did I say it more than three times? How many times I said it? See, now you distracted everyone because now I'm off topic and people, that's why they say they don't come and listen to me. All right. And you still got distracted. Do you have any respect for yourselves, Christians? Honestly, do you have any respect and self-control that I got to keep doing this and treat you like kids? Isn't it disgraceful? Grown men and women can't control themselves. They're like kids and someone has to yell at them. Why should I yell at you? I'm not your father. Am I wasting my time doing these sessions? Because I can go back and write, write articles and not do this. Because you have no respect, no matter how many times I tell you, control yourself. Okay, let's get back to the issue. Remy, are you LOLOLing? Do you want me to block you? 
Squirrel, you're a filthy dog, and your mother is worse than you, you filthy pig. Okay? Thank you. Are we ready now? Can we move on? Where did Bart Ehrman get the idea that Justin Martyr thought Christians worship? Okay, we're going to block this dog. Remy, you asked for it, so I'm going to treat you like the dog that you are. Okay, shut your mouth and get out of here. All right, thank you. See, that's what you want. Talk tough. Where do you get the idea? Thank you, Father Sunday. God bless you. Here it is, this part. This part. But both him and the son who came forth from him and taught us these things and the host of the other good angels who follow are made like to him. See, here, here, Bart Ehrman thinks that when Justin mentioned the angels, he means we worship the father, the son, and the angels made like the son and the spirit. A gross misreading of Justin Martyr. Amen, George. We need to fast. I need to fast by the power of the Holy Spirit more. Okay, but listen, do you see where they're getting the misunderstanding? Do you see where they're getting the misunderstanding? Because Justin says, we worship the Father and the Son who came forth from the Father to teach us these things and host of other good angels who follow and are made like to him. So for some reason, Justin Martyr assumes that when, I'm sorry, Bart Ehrman, Lord save me from error for the glory of Jesus, when Bart Ehrman reads Justin Martyr mentioning the angels who are made like Jesus, that he means, see, angels are worshipped too. That's a gross misreading of Justin Martyr. Okay? Do you know what Justin Martyr is saying here? Let me explain to you what he's saying. He's saying, not only did the Son come from the Father to teach us, but also the angels came forth from the Father, from the Son, to teach us as well. You understand how he confused and mixed up? Confused and mixed up? Here's another filthy dog who's trying to cause division. Okay? Confused and mixed up. Christians worshiping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with a reference to angels coming forth to teach us like Jesus did and assuming that means angels are worshiped as well. You get it now? And so Shabir, who when it comes to Islam, won't just take anyone's word for it, but would go back and investigate what someone says to see if they've accurately, mis accurately represented a source, simply pairs Bart Ehrman without going back and checking him out. What does that tell you about Shabir? What does that tell you about Shabir? Before I move on. Okay. Now I'm going to give you further proof. This is all my article. Justin did not say we worship angels. He didn't say that from his own writings. Are we ready? Here it is. This is from the first apology, chapter 16. This is from the same writing of Justin Martyr. If you continue reading to chapter 16, it's all in my article. Folks, let me read what he said. And with regard to our not swearing at all, swearing by the gods, goddesses and all, and always speaking the truth, he enjoined as follows, swear not at all, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these comes of evil, and that we worship God alone. Bam. Hold on, Bart Ehrman. Hold on, Shabri Ali. In that same book, First Apology, chapter 16, he said, we worship God alone. We worship God alone. How could you dare misrepresent Justin Martyr to suggest that he says, we worship God, Jesus in the Spirit, and angels, when well, that's not the plain reading of that section, when he goes on to say, we worship God alone, so there's your trinity, folks. If you worship God alone, and the God you worship is the Father and the Son and the Spirit, that means the God who alone you worship is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Where's my logic wrong? 
Let me continue reading. And that we ought to worship God alone. He thus persuaded us. The greatest commandment is, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve with all your heart, with all your strength, the Lord God that made you. Let me read the entire section. Okay. And when a certain man came to him and said, good master, he answered and said, there is none good but God only who made all things. And let those who are not found living as he taught be understood to be no Christians. See, notice again, Justin saying, if you say you're a Christian, you better live up to what he taught. If you don't live up to what he taught, you're a fake Christian. I'm a fake Christian. So Lord Jesus, save us by the power of the Spirit to be hearers and paying lip service. Make us doers of what you've taught. Please, Lord Jesus. He says it here. Let me repeat that part again. And let those who are not found living as he taught be understood to be no Christians, even though they profess with the lip the precepts of Christ. For not those who make profession, but those who do the works shall be saved according to his word. Wow. Now, if you want to know why Justin Martyr is important, Justin Martyr, again, you can correct me, was a Samaritan, a Gentile Samaritan who converted to the Christian faith and became one of the mightiest Christian apologists, defenders of the faith. And he wrote around 150 AD and he died as a martyr for the glory of Jesus Christ. Right? Now, let me read a couple more. Quiet. Shut up. Okay, now, here. Here's what he writes in his dialogue with Trifo the Jew. Chapter 103. He had a debate with Jews, proving Jesus is God. Dialogue with Trifo the Jew. Chapter 103. Notice what he says. For this devil, when Jesus went up, from the river Jordan, at the time when the voice spoke to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you, right? Begotten you. Is recorded in the memoirs, memoirs of the apostles, to have come to him and tempted him, even so far as to say to him, worship me. And Christ answered him, get behind me, Satan. You worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So Justin is showing we worship only God because that's what Jesus taught us. Worship only God. And in that same book, First Apology, First Apology, that same one, chapter 17, let me read this section. It's a lengthy one, but I'm just going to read this one section. That's about it. Once to God alone we render worship, but in other things we gladly serve you, acknowledging you as kings and rulers of men and praying that with your kingly power, you be found to possess also sound knowledge. You see what Justin's saying? We don't worship Caesar. We don't worship Caesar. We only worship God alone, but we honor Caesar and we pray for him. Here it is. Okay. Did everyone get, everyone get that Justin said, we worship God alone, only God not creatures, not kings, not even angels. Did everyone get that? Because now you're going to see it's Trinitarianism. Trinitarianism, okay? This is a lengthy quote. This is a lengthy quote. Sorry about that. My nose. Whew. Allergies, man. Sorry. Whew. I'm gonna, yeah, I got allergies. Whew. Okay. Notice what he writes in his second apology. Second apology. Chapter 13. Are you ready? It's a lengthy quote, but I'm just going to quote the relevant parts. Okay? Justin Martyr, Second Apology, Chapter 13. You guys ready? I hope this is blessing you. I hope this is encouraging you, strengthening you. You have the truth. When you worship the triune God, you have the truth. And don't let anyone misrepresent, misrepresent the fathers. Here you go. Second Apology. All the links are in the articles. Okay? Second Apology, Justin Martyr, chapter 13. Watch what he says here. Whatever things we things were rightly said among all men are the property of us Christians. For next to God, next to God, meaning the Father, we worship and love the Word who is from the unbegotten and ineffable God since he also he became man for our sakes. So next to the Father, we worship and love the Word who is from the unbegotten, ineffable God, the God who is incomprehensible, since also he became man for our sakes, becoming a partaker of our sufferings, he might also bring us healing. 
Now, in his first apology, chapter 13, watch what he says. First apology, chapter 13. What sober-minded man, then, will not acknowledge that we are not atheists, worshiping as we do the maker of this universe? Now, he goes on to say, watch here. Our teacher of these things is Jesus Christ, who also was born for this purpose and was crucified under Pontius Pilate, procurator of Judea, in the times of Tiberius Caesar, and that we reasonably worship him, having learned that he's the son of the true God himself, holding him in second place, and the prophetic spirit in the third we will prove. For they proclaim our madness to consist in this, that we give to a crucified man a place second to the unchangeable eternal God, the creator of all. For they do not discern the mystery that is herein, to which as he... As we make it plain to you, we pray you to give heed. Did you catch it? First person, first position, the Father we worship. And next to him, second to him, we worship Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became man. And earlier he said, we also worship the prophetic spirit, who's in the third position. Now do you see why we Trinitarians say first person, Father, second person, the Son, third person, the Holy Spirit? Do you see why we say Jesus is the second person of the Godhead? And where we got it from? We got it from the Bible as hammered out and understood by the early church fathers. Do you get it now? Before I move on, who's the first person of the Godhead? The Father. Who's the second person? The Son. Who's the third? The prophetic spirit. And we worship only God and God alone. But the God we worship is the Father. And second to him, we worship the Son. And third, the prophetic spirit. And there is no fourth, no fifth. Sure sounds like the Trinity. Sure sounds like the Trinity. Now, let me read some more things he says about Jesus. Watch here. This is in dialogue with Trifo the Jew, chapter 106. Chapter 106. Accordingly, when a star rose in heaven at the time of his birth, as is recorded in the memoirs of his apostles, he's referring to the gospels as the memoirs of his followers, the Magi from Arabia, recognizing the sign by this, came and worshipped him. Worshipped him. Now again, notice what he says in chapter 126. Chapter 126 in his dialogue with Chifo the Jew. Guys, pay attention who Jesus is according to Justin Martyr. But if you knew, Drypho, who he is that is called at one time the angel of great counsel. So Justin is telling Trifo the Jew, you know who this Jesus is that was crucified? I'm going to show you he's the God of your fathers that appear in the Old Testament. Justin is telling the Jew, Trifo. That Jesus, that Judah was crucified, that Jesus, that Judah was crucified, you know who he is, Justin? He is the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the angel of the great council of Isaiah 9, 6. He's the one that was appearing to all your forebears in the Old Testament. Let me read it. But if you knew Trifo, who he is that is called at one time the angel of great council. That's the Greek version of Isaiah 9, verse 6. And a man by Ezekiel. Ezekiel calls him a man. And like the son of man by Daniel. And a child by Isaiah. Isaiah 9, 6. A child is born. And Christ and God to be worshipped by David. See what Justin said? David says that this Jesus is the Christ and God that you're to worship. David himself calls him God and says he's to be worshipped. And Christ and a stone by many, and wisdom by Solomon. And he's called Joseph and Jude and a star by Moses, and the east by Zechariah, and the suffering one, and Jacob and Israel by Isaiah again. These are all names given to him by all these prophets. And a rod and a flower and a cornerstone and son of God. You would not have blasphemed him who has now come. If you knew who he was, you would never blaspheme him because he's your God, the God that all the prophets spoke about. Right? You would not have blasphemed him who has now come and been born and suffered and ascended to heaven, who shall also come again, second coming, affirmed by the early church 
Anyone who denies it is a heretic. And then your 12 tribes shall mourn. For if you had understood what has been written by the prophets, you would not have denied that he was God, the son of the only unbegotten, unutterable God. Wow. Who's on fire right now reading what Justin just wrote? Who's blown away by what Justin just wrote? Do you see why these church fathers should not be ignored? And why these are your spiritual ancestors? Holy slaves of Jesus. Holy spirit-filled warriors. Spiritual lions. Prayer warriors. Fasting. Sacrificing their flesh. Seeking to honor the Lord. Living from proclaiming his glory. Refuting heretics. And dying as martyrs. These are our spiritual ancestors. How I wish in Jesus' name we can be like them in their holiness and purity and obedience and love and zeal and wisdom and knowledge and willingness to die for Jesus. Protestants, we need to wake up. We need to know these men and women. These men and women. Right? Now, here's what's ironic. Even, even Bart Ehrman in his book. Let me show you what he says. This is all my article. Let me give you the link again so you understand. Okay. Even Bart Ehrman in his book. You know what he admits? Bart Ehrman in his book, How Jesus Became God. And here's the article again. I'm giving you the link. He even admits that the New Testament writers... The writers of the New Testament identify Jesus as the Old Testament angel of God. He says that angel of God of the Old Testament that appeared in human form, that was identified as God and worshipped as God, the New Testament says that angel became Jesus. Can I read his citations for you? And then we're going to go to Ignatius. We're going to go to Ignatius next. Why he's amazing. Okay. Can I read them for you? But I need your attention. I just gave you the link again. Malan, click on the article instead of asking me and go. You'll see it there. I just gave you the article. Please, Malan. It's there. Make it easier for me. Yep. Now let's read this. Are you ready? It's a lengthy quote, but I want to read it. There are two principal ways that Justin understands Christ. This is Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman is telling us that the New Testament identifies Jesus as the angel of God who became flesh. And that's what Justin Martyr believed. Because where did Justin Martyr get it? From those who came before him and in the writings of the apostles. Because remember, Justin kept mentioning the memoirs of the apostles. The letters of the apostles where they taught us these things. So notice what Ehrman's going to say. There are two principal ways that Justin understands Christ as a divine being. Both of which hearken back... To the earlier views we've already explored, that's in his book. Justin de developed these views in more sophisticated ways than seen in the New Testament itself. So although the New Testament teaches it, Justin had to explain it in a more sophisticated way because his context is different. He's dealing with Greek philosophers, unbelievers. So now he has to answer questions that the New Testament writers did not need to answer. So he had to use the philosophical language of the Greeks to explain what the New Testament writers are teaching. Okay, so far are you with me? So far are you with me? You're being distracted again. If you're distracted, we'll start blocking people. Okay, now let's continue reading. Okay. He saw Christ both as the pre-incarnate angel of the Lord and as the logos of God made flesh. So Justin believed Jesus was who? The angel of the Lord. That Old Testament angel who's not a creature, but a messenger sent by the Father who appears in human form, who's worshipped as God, who then becomes Jesus. That's who Justin believed Jesus was. And that's Bart Ehrman saying it. At least this part he got right. Now let me keep reading. In several places throughout his writings, Justin speaks of Christ as the angel of the Lord who appeared in the Old Testament. 
In chapter 2, we saw, in chapter 2 of Bart Ehrman's book, that there is some ambiguity in the famous passage of Moses and the burning bush. The angel of the Lord speaks with Moses, but then the narrative shifts to indicate that, in fact, it is the Lord who is speaking with him. Justin is keen to explain this textual conundrum in Christological terms. So Justin took Exodus 3, where the angel appears, and when the angel speaks, he's identified as Jehovah speaking. So what did Justin do with this? Here's how Justin explained it. The reason this divine figure is both the angel of the Lord and the Lord at the same time is that it is not God the Father who's there in the bush, but it is Christ who is fully divine. That's what Justin taught, and Ehrman admits this. It wasn't God the Father that appeared to Moses, according to Justin. That was Christ who's fully divine. First, Justin establishes that this angel is no mere angel but God. Thank you, Bart Ehrman, for admitting this. Thank you, Bart Ehrman, for admitting this. Let's keep reading. Now he quotes Justin. He's not going to quote Justin. Do you not see? This is Justin debating the Jew, trifle. Do you not see that he whom Moses speaks of as an angel, who conversed with him from the fire bush, is the same who, being God, that angel is God, signifies to Moses that he's the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. But then, now this is Armin mentioning Justin, but then he argues that this God could not have been God the Father. And he quotes Justin again. No one with even the slightest intelligence would dare assert that the creator and father of all things left his super celestial realms to make himself visible in a little spot on earth. Dialogue number 60. And so who was this God? It was Christ, the angel, who later was to become human. Did you catch Justin's reasoning? Did you catch what Justin said? The father never left his super celestial throne and appeared on earth. Therefore, the God that appeared as the angel, as the word, in human form, whom they worship as God, that's Jesus Christ. That is Christ, your God, Trifo. Hey, Trifo, you Jew. That God was Christ who became man, whom you crucified and killed. That's what Justin believed. That's what Justin believed. Exactly on a rule. I'm not done yet because it's lengthy and we're going to go into Ignatius. Christ was also one of the three angels who appeared to Abraham at the Oaks of Memory in Genesis 18. This is Ehrman saying what Justin believes. Ehrman is... Saying this is what Ehrman, this Ehrman saying this is what Justin believed. Another passage we have considered because this angel is also a man, but is called the Lord. It is clear to Justin. Now Ehrman quotes Justin. Justin speaking to the Jew trifle. There exists and is mentioned in scripture another God and Lord under the creator of all things who is called an angel. This one appeared to Abraham, Jacob, and Moses and is called God. And it's distinct from God, the creator, distinct that is in number, but not in mind. Wow. He's saying not a completely different God, but a different mind, meaning a different person. That's what Justin taught. These patriarchs did not see God the Father, but God the Son as angel. Wow. Let it sink in, folks, before I move on. Wow. Did it sink in? Justin sounds like we Trinitarians. He's arguing the way Anthony Rogers argues. He's arguing the way I argue. He's arguing the way Michael Heiser argues. He's arguing the way Michael Brown argues, even Jay Dyer. When all of us quote the Old Testament to show that's Jesus, who's the angel of the Lord, appearing as a man who claims to be God, does what only God can do, who's worshipped as God. Yeah, in other words, we're in good company because we're following the ancient tradition of the early church. So any Trinitarian who says, no, that's not Jesus in the Old Testament. No, you can't really use those to prove the, tr the Trinity. He is betraying his spiritual roots and going against his spiritual forebears, such as Justin Martyr, Tertullian, and others. Right? Right? 
Guys, don't let the demons distract you. Mods, when a demon comes in, block them. Okay, now let me finish this other section. God the Son, then, is the one to whom God the Father is speaking in the Old Testament when he says, let us make humankind in our image. So according to Justin, when the Father says, let us make man in our image, he was talking to God the Son. He is the one to whom God speaks in the Psalms when he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. And he is the one to whom the text refers when it says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Did you catch it? Justin says in Genesis 1, 26, the father was speaking to the son. When God said, let us make man in our image, he was talking to the son. He's saying, son, you are one with me. You're God almighty with me and your co-creator. Let us create man in our image. And then Justin said, Psalm 45, 6, that's God speaking to the Son when he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And Justin said that in Psalm 110, verse 1, that's the Father who said to the Son, Sit at my right hand. Justin quotes the same verses the New Testament does that we do to show a divine plurality in the Old Testament. Right? Now, I have one more section, one more section. Again, Bart Ehrman helping us prove. Thank you, Ehrman. You're helping us prove you misrepresented Justin because you're citing Justin who affirms Jesus is the Old Testament angel of Jehovah who is called Jehovah, Jehovah of hosts, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who appeared to all the prophets in visible form, oftentimes as a man, who's co-creator with the Father, who created all things with the Father. And yet you want us to believe that Justin somehow doesn't believe in the Trinity? Come on, Ehrman. The very citations from Justin that you're citing prove you wrong. But let me now quote the rest of it. I hope I'm not boring you with this stuff. Everyone following me? Because I have another section. And then we're going to go to Ignatius. And I'm going to follow a systematic decimation of Shabir's lies and blasphemies to expose him. You do not respect that charlatan. He's not worthy of your respect. Okay? Let me now finish it. This is, again, Ehrman's book, How Jesus Became God. Okay? Let me read it. For Justin, this is Ehrman writing, Christ was not only the angel of the Lord, however. He was also the word, logos, of God who became man. It appears clear that Justin was influenced by the Christology found in the Gospel of John, which means Justin knew the Gospel of John, read it, studied it, affirmed it. A book that he rarely, if ever, actually quotes, surprisingly enough. But Justin's Logos Christology is more advanced and philosophically developed than found in the fourth Gospel. That's to be expected, because Justin was a philosopher who studied philosophy and was debating Greek philosophers and used Greek philosophy to explain Jesus as the Logos, the word. But let me continue. Ehrman continues to say, Justin was especially concerned to deal with the question of whether Christ is in any sense a being distinct from God the Father. And if so, how one is to imagine the relationship of Christ, the incarnate word, to God the Father himself. Now note, in one place, Justin considers Christ as the word in relation to words we ourselves use. When we speak a word, in some sense, that word has an existence independent of us because it leaves us, right? As we discover when someone misunderstand, misunderstands the word we have spoken. On the other hand, the word we utter owes its existence entirely to us since we are the ones who utter the word. So we utter the word, it comes from us, but then it leaves us. So in some, some sense, it's distinct from us. That's what Ehrman is saying, how Justin understood and explained Jesus as the word of the Father. So let me continue. Here's what Ehrman goes on to say. The logos of God is like that. It comes forth from God and so belongs entirely to God, but takes on its own kind of existence once it comes forth. That's what Justin believed. Now, final paragraph. In another place, Justin likens Christ's relationship to God to a fire that is used to start another fire. The second fire exists independently of the first, but could not have come into existence without the other. Moreover, when it is started, the new fire does not diminish anything of the first fire. 
making it less than it was to begin with. The first fire is just the same as it was before. But the second fire is just as fully fire as the first. And that's how it is with God and Christ. Christ came forth from God. Notice that's what Justin believed. So Christ wasn't created from nothing. He existed in God, came forth from God, became his own being, and God was not diminished in the slightest when that happened. Dialogue number 61. Thus, Justin stresses that Christ is a separate, separate being from God and is numerically, numerically meaning a distinct number of person from the Father, but Christ is at the same time fully God. Thank you, Bart Ehrman, for beautifully, accurately summing up the teaching of Justin Martyr. So guys, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? If even Ehrman admits, even Ehrman admits, Justin taught, and it's in my articles, his citation, Jesus came forth from the Father. So he's not part of creation. And if he's part of the Father, he's uncreated. So the Father summoned forth his reason, his word, to then employ the word to help him create everything. That act of bringing him out is when he begot him as a son, and now he exists distinctly from the Father, but inseparably from the Father, and is not part of creation, but is eternally part of the Father, and then was used to create everything, and therefore because he's from the Father, he's fully God, and yet not the same person as the Father. Guys, you're going to have to go back, re-listen to this, and read those articles for yourselves. Yeah, similar to John, but John doesn't unpack it with this depth, the Gospel of John. Okay, before I move on, was that clear? Because I want to go to Ignatius, and I gave you the article to Ignatius. Let me give it to you again. Ah, oh, shit up. Ignatius. Okay, let me tell you why Ignatius is important. Are you now enjoying these decimations of Shibrali? Because I'm going to do multi parts. Because notice we're killing several birds with one stone. Okay, several birds, one, uh, several birds, one stone. I'm exposing Shibrali for being an inconsistent, dishonest, deceitful charlatan and a blasphemer, though he tries to masquerade as a polite intellectual. Secondly, we're going deeper into the Bible to understand it, to learn exegesis. And thirdly, we're learning about the early church fathers, these great men and women of God that God raised up and empowered to defend the truth and die for the truth. Right? So you see you're getting meat here. So don't just think it's about Islam. Exactly, Andy. God bless you, brother. Exactly. God bless you, Rob Christian. The Lord Jesus protect you and preserve you, you and your wife and your child and use you mightily. Save you from any scandal. Save me from scandals and save us from divisions to work together for the glory of Jesus. Subscribe to Rob Christian's channel. Support him too. Satan tries to attack and divide us, but because the blood of Jesus is greater, what Satan tries to destroy, the Lord Jesus <clears throat> preserves and saves. So this guy's my brother and my younger brother, so I can chew him out and insult him, and he's got accepted because I insult those whom I love. Just want you to know that. Anyway, are you ready for Ignatius? Are you ready for Ignatius? Now let me tell you why Ignatius is amazing. Ignatius is a disciple of the apostles like John. He knew the disciples, the apostles. He met them, and he was the bishop of Antioch in Syria. Ignatius was a holy slave of Jesus who died as a martyr willingly. He wrote seven letters to seven churches on his way to being fed to the lions and killed at Rome. One of the letters he wrote to the Ephesians, the same church that Paul wrote to, Ignatius. Here's the article again. Here's the article. Click on it. He also wrote a letter to the Christians at Rome. Do you know what he said in that letter? You know what he said? He begged the Christians at Rome 
do not stop me from being martyred. I want to be eaten by the lions so I can offer my flesh as bread to my God. I want to be martyred. I want the lions to kill me because I want to die for Jesus. Tell me that man is not a holy slave of Jesus. And thank God, thank God, his letters were preserved. Okay? And they're online. You can read them for free. Click my article. Click on the links. Okay? Are you with me there? Now, you know why it's amazing? Notice the chain of transmission. Ignatius, the disciple of the apostles, met with them, spoke with them, had their writings. Bishop of the, of the church in Antioch, Syria. Do you know why Antioch, Syria is important for those of you? Who know your Bible? Do you know why it's important? Antioch in Syria was the place where believers were first called Christians. Acts 11, 26. Antioch was the blessed place where believers were called Christians for the first time. Acts 11, verse 26. Let's read it. Acts 11, verse 26. Protestant post it for us. Tenshi. Hamdi Tenshi. Hamdi Tenshi, stop the side talk. Acts 11, 26. See, again, hey, J Joe Biden, get the hell out of here, Joe Biden. Bring Protestant back. Acts 11, 26, Joe, not Acts 1, 26. Joe Biden, get out of here. Acts 11, 26. And I know I said it correctly. I wasn't mistaken. Okay, let's try it again. Joe, why do you keep going to Protestants' basement? Stay in your own basement. Here you go, Acts eleven twenty six. read. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Where were they first called Christians? In Antioch. Where is Antioch? Syria. Who is Ignatius? The bishop of the church in Antioch. You got it? Can I read what he wrote? These are all from his letters in this article. I'm going to give it to you again. Here's the article again. And we're going to end it with we're going to end this session with him cuz now right after this Us Osama Dakdok is going to be live with me. Lord willing, right after the session, I'm going live with Osama Dakdok, Women in Islam. Here's the link. Let's read. Let's end it with a bang. And he's writing around 107 AD. 107 AD. Between 107 and 112 AD. A decade after the death of John. Because history says John died around 90 to 95 AD. Okay? Watch here. This is his letter to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, the very church that Paul wrote to. Are you guys ready? Be blown away, man. Tell me this is not mind-blowing stuff, how real Jesus is, how amazing the Bible is, and because Jesus is real and almighty to save, he's given us massive, overwhelming amount of evidence showing the Christian faith is true and he lives, so we have no excuse for unbelief. Notice what he wrote to the Ephesians. Greeting, Ignatius, who was also called Theophorus, Theophorus, to the church which is, which is at Ephesus in Asia, deservedly most happy, being blessed in the greatness and fullness of God the Father, and predestined before the ages of time, that it should be always for enduring and unchangeable glory, being united. Watch here. This should make you cry, joys, tears of joy. Being united and elected through the true passion by the will of the Father and Jesus Christ, our God. Abundant happiness through Jesus Christ and his undefiled grace. <whistles> Guys, do you know what the Greek says? This is in my article. Here it is. Notice two persons, not one, the Father and Jesus. And you know what he says in the Greek? He calls Jesus tu theu himon. You know what he literally called him? Jesus, the God of us. Jesus, 
the God of us. He called them Tuthayu, Ha Theos, the God, not just a God. The God, not just a God. But there's more. There's more. Okay? There is more. Let's read. Let's go here. Chapter 1. Notice here. I have become acquainted with your name, much beloved in God, which you have acquired by the habit of righteousness. See? Because you're righteous and pure, you have a reputation. According to faith and love in Jesus Christ our Savior. Now watch this. Being the followers of God and stirring up yourselves by the blood of God. What? God has blood? Ignatius. God has blood? By the blood of God. You have perfectly accomplished the work which is beseeming to you. For on hearing that I came bound from Syria. I was bound. They took me from Syria bound. For the common name and hope, for the sake of our Lord Jesus and the faith we have, trusting through your prayers to be permitted to fight with beasts at Rome. Let me go and fight these beasts, these lions, that my martyrdom, that I may be killed by them, indeed become the disciple of him who gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. You know what he's saying here? I want to follow the example of my Jesus my Jesus died as a sacrifice. I too want to die as a sacrifice in honor of what he did for me. You see what he said? How can you not love this man? Right? You hasten to see me. I received, therefore, your whole multitude in the name of God through Onesimus, a man of inexpressible love, and your bishop in the flesh, whom I pray you by Jesus Christ to love, that you you would all seek to be like him. And blessed be he who has granted unto you, being worthy to obtain such an excellent bishop. Now, chapter 7. Are you ready for chapter 7? You ready to get blown away? Chapter 7. Okay, watch here. Chapter 7. Beware of false teachers. For some are in the habit of caring about the name of Jesus Christ and wicked guile, while yet they practice things unworthy of God. Fake Christians. Whom you must flee as you would wild beasts, for they are ravening dogs. Wow, Sam. Why are you calling people dogs, Sam? Don't call people dogs. That's not being Christian. Oh, gee, Ignatius called fake Christians, hypocrites, who lived in sin and defiled themselves, claiming to be Christian, ravening dogs. I'm in good company. Who bite secretly, against whom you must be on your guard, inasmuch as they are men who can scarcely be cured. Now watch here. Look what he says about our Lord Jesus. There is one physician who is possessed both of flesh and spirit, two natures of Christ, both made and not made. His flesh is made, but he himself is uncreated. God existing in flesh, true life in death, both of Mary and of God. First passable, meaning he could die, then impassable, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, Ignatius. There's one physician who's possessed both of flesh and spirit, two natures, both made and not made. He's uncreated, but his body, human nature, created. Genitas, K, agenitas, literally born, unborn. God existing in flesh, two natures, and the rest of it. True life and death. He is life, but then he experienced death. Both of Mary and of God. He's from Mary and of God. Passable. And then impassable, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Guys excited? I got more. You excited? Exactly, Philip. Exactly. <laughs> I love what Philip said. If I got four sons, I'm going to call them Athanasius, Justin, Ignatius, and Irenaeus. You ain't lying, buddy. You ain't lying. Beautiful names, beautiful men, servants of Jesus. Okay, chapter 18. The glory of the cross. Chapter 18, the glory of the cross. Let my spirit be counted as nothing for the sake of the cross, which is a stumbling block to those that do not believe, but to us salvation and life eternal. Where is the wise man? Where 
the disputer. Where is the boasting of those who are styled prudent? For our God, Jesus Christ. Who? Our God, Jesus Christ, was, according to the appointment of God, conceived in the womb of Mary. Who is conceived in the womb of Mary? Our God of the seed of David, but by the Holy Ghost. He was born and baptized that by his passion he might purify the water. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. I'm going to skip because it's lengthy. I'm going to go to the relevant section. Right? Hence, every kind of magic, chapter 19, was destroyed and every bond of wickedness disappeared. Ignorance was removed and of the old kingdom abolished. God himself manifested in human form for the renewal of eternal life. God himself. God himself. In human form for the renewal of eternal life. Okay. Now we're going to read a different letter. This is his epistle to the Magnesians. The epistle to the Magnesians. Chapter 6. Are you ready? Again, I can't read all of it. I'm going to read this the relevant parts for the sake of time. Talking about the bishops and the deacons and... And the presbyters, who are most dear to me and are trusted with the ministry of Jesus Christ, who was with the Father before the beginning of time, and in the end was revealed. Wait, wait. There's two persons again. Two persons. And he mentioned the Holy Spirit, the third person, because Jesus was conceived from Mary by the Holy Ghost. So that's three. But wait, who is Jesus? Prisoner to the Magnesians. And are entrusted with the ministry of Jesus Christ who was with the Father, so he's not the Father. There goes the blasphemy of oneness modalism. Ignatians destroys modalism, oneness theology, by showing that Jesus was there with the Father before the beginning of time. So that means Jesus is eternal, uncreated. You catch it? If Jesus is there before the beginning of time, that means he's timeless. And if he's there with the Father, that means Jesus is not the Father. So you have two divine persons, and he mentions the Holy Spirit. Ignatius was a Trinitarian. Right? Chapter 7. As therefore the Lord did nothing without the Father being united to him. There you go again. The Lord is not the Father and does nothing apart the Father, but he's united to him. Now, the end part, the end part of it, chapter 7. Therefore, run together into one temple of God as one altar, as to one Jesus Christ who came forth from one Father and is with and has gone to one. Notice, Jesus is not the Father. As to one Jesus Christ who came forth from one Father and is with and has gone to one. Okay, almost done, folks. All I'm doing is reading so you know your church history. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. I'm going to read the last part. That there is one God who has manifested, who has manifested by Jesus Christ, his Son. So God the Father is not the Son, but the Son revealed the Father. And this Son, who is his eternal word, not proceeding from forth from silence, and on all things pleased him that sent him. So the Father is not the Son. The Son is the Son of the Father, the Word of the Father, who proceeds from the Father and reveals the Father. Oh, my goodness. Now, here is what he says in the Epistle to the Romans. Are you ready? The Epistle to the Romans. Guys, I want to start, start shouting for joy. Here, Epistle to the Romans. We're almost done. Greeting. Ignatius was called Theophorus to the church which has obtained mercy through the majesty of the Most High Father and Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, tu monu weyu autu. So notice, Jesus is not the Father. He's the only begotten Son of the Father. But it gets better. Aha. The church, which is beloved and enlightened by the will of Him <clears throat> that wills all things, which are according to the love of Jesus Christ, our God. Ah, guess what the Greek is? 
Guys, you know what the Greek is? Here's the Greek. To theou himon, to Jesus Christ, the God of us. The God of us. Wait, Ignatius says, God is the Father. The Father is God. Jesus is not the Father. <clears throat> He's the Word of the Father, who reveals the Father, who was with the Father before time and eternity, right? Only begotten Son of the Father. And yet Jesus himself is the God of us, God existing in flesh. <clears throat> Let me continue. <clears throat> Lord, heal my throat for your glory. Which also presides in the place of the region of the Romans, worthy of God, worthy of honor, worthy of the highest happiness, worthy of praise, worthy of obtaining her every desire, worthy of being deemed holy, and which presides over love, is named from Christ and from the Father. So they're not the same again. Which I also salute in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. Oh, but let's end it. You are purified from every strange taint. I wish abundance, happiness, unblameably in Christ Jesus, our God. Our God. And what is the Greek? Jesus to theou hemon. Oops, I got a typo. Darn it. Typo. The God of us. Jesus Christ, the God of us. Chapter 3. Let me go to the relevant section. It's too long. <clears throat> Nothing visible is eternal. For our God, Jesus Christ, now that he is with the Father, is all the more revealed in his glory. Wait. So wait, Ignatius. Jesus Christ is flesh, and he's our God, and yet he's with the Father. So he's not the Father? No. So wait, Ignatius. You are a disciple of the apostles. You met with the apostles. <clears throat> you read their writings. You're the bishop of Antioch, Syria. You're on your way to be martyred around 107 AD. And yet you believe Father and Son and Holy Spirit, they're not the same. The Son existed before time with the Father. <clears throat> He's the only begotten Son of the Father. He's unborn. He's the Word of the Father. Then he's born as flesh from his blessed mother by the Holy Spirit. So he's God existing in flesh, true life existing in death, unborn and born, who died. And yet, Shabir Ali wants to convince me there was no trinity. It took centuries to develop. The epistle to the Smyrnians, we're almost done. Epistle to the Smyrnians, chapter 1. Guys, pay attention here. Chapter 1. I glorify God, even Jesus Christ, who has given you such wisdom. You know what he literally says? Here's what he literally said. He, he begins it by glorifying who? Who does he glorify? Who does he glorify? Watch here. Please, let me know that you're following with me. We got a good crowd, close to 400. Doxaxo, yesun. Christon, ton, theon, ton, hutas, himas, sophisanta. You know what ton, theon is? The God. I glorify Jesus Christ, the God who made you so wise. Wait, Ignatius, you worship Jesus? Yes. You glorify Jesus? Yes. And you praise him? Yes. And you praise him as the God who makes us wise? Absolutely. Absolutely. For I have observed that you are perfected in an immovable faith, as if you're nailed to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, affirmation of Jesus' death on the cross, both in the flesh and the spirit, and are established in love through the blood of Christ, being fully persuaded with respect to our Lord that he was truly of the seed of David according to the flesh. So he's a physical descendant of David. And the Son of God, according to the will and power of God, that was truly born of a virgin. Oh, affirms the virgin conception and birth. Hmm. Was baptized by John. Wow. Confirms that too. In order that all righteousness may be fulfilled. Allusion to Matthew 3.15. By him and was truly under Pontius Pilate and Herod the Tetrarch, Tetrarch, nailed to the cross for us in his flesh. Oh, affirming that Jesus died for us. Of this fruit. We are all by his divinely blessed passion 
that we might set up a standard for all ages through his resurrection. You even affirm his resurrection, Ignatius, to all his holy and faithful followers, whether among Jews or Gentiles in the one body of his church. He just affirmed the whole Christian faith. Trinity, Jesus the God-man, died for us, raised to life, washes us in his blood, and seals us. Almost done. This comes from the epistle to Polycarp, and we're done. The epistle to Parley, Polycarp. You ready? Chapter 3. Are you ready? We're going to go out with a bang. Chapter 3, and I'll end it with chapter 3. Let not those who seem worthy of credit but teach strange doctrines fill you with apprehension. Stand firm as does an anvil which is beaten. No matter how much they beat us, we're an anvil, unbreakable by the almighty power of Jesus. Right? It is the part of a noble athlete to be wounded. Christians expect you'll be wounded and yet to conquer. And especially we ought to hear all things for the sake of God. That he also, we bear all things for the sake of God that he also may bear with us. Be ever becoming more zealous than what you are. Be more zealous to suffer for Jesus and not give in. Watch here. Weigh carefully the times. How relevant these words are, are for us today in light of what's happening in the world. Look for him. Don't look to your government. Don't look to your job. Don't look to doctors. Don't look for that for security. Look for him who is above all time, eternal and invisible, yet who became visible for our sakes, impalpable and impassable, meaning cannot be touched in his divine nature with sufferings and pain, yet who became passable on our account and who in every kind of way suffered for our sakes. Wow. And in chapter 8, he says, our God, Jesus Christ. Let me post that again. Watch here. Guys, let's read this again. Watch here. Wow. Watch here. Let me post it so you can read it. Look for him who's above all time, eternal, invisible, yet he became visible for our sakes, impalpable and impassable, yet who became passable on our account and who in every kind of way suffered for our sakes. Now, guys, let's wrap it up and sum up. I'm going to do a part two, obviously. Guys, re-listen to this. Hit the like button. Go to my articles. They'll be in the description box after this is done. Learn this material. Ignatius, writing around 107 AD, a disciple of the apostles. Justin Martyr, writing around 150 AD, who was converted and met the disciples of the apostles. The disciples of the apostles. Both of them provide an unbroken chain of transmission to the writers of the New Testament and the apostles themselves, and they both affirm the Trinity. Jesus is not the Father. He's not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father, and he's not the Son. But God the Father, we worship. Jesus Christ, we worship. And the prophetic Spirit, Justin Martyr says, we worship even though we are to worship God alone. And Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. When they saw God, they didn't see the Father. They saw Jesus as Jehovah of hosts, as the angel of Jehovah, as the child born of Isaiah, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom they worship, who then became Jesus Christ, our Lord. And yet Shabir Ali, Shabir Ali had the audacity, Shabir Ali had the audacity to say, Justin Martyr thought that Jesus was like an angel. So there's no proof for him being God. That took years of progression. You see what a nasty, vile, wicked son of Satan he is? So now you guys, Storm Shabir, take this link. Share it with him. Take my article saying Sam is exposing you. You're a charlatan. And he's saying debate him on the topics he challenged you. You can't hide anymore, Shabir. Sam is coming after you for the glory of the triune God. For the glory of Jesus, Muhammad's God and destroyer. Right? So hope you guys were blessed. Lord willing, more. But I need you to pray hard for me. That Jesus makes me more like Jesus, more pure. Remember what they said, Ignatius and Justin Martyr. If you don't live up to the teaching of Christ, you're a hypocrite. Beseech the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help all of us, especially me, 
Please, we don't want to be hypocrites. Give us the power to live the teachings of Christ. Die to our flesh. To be holy and pure and obedient in love with the Lord. Love each other by our deeds. Pray for my health, my daughter's health, and their provision. Pray the Lord will keep blessing the YouTube channel and get rid of satanic nuisances and pray for the provision to do the work by his grace as he provides. We love the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one true God, the Father's eternal word, his Son and eternal spirit. And this is the faith of all true Christians, starting from Adam all the way till the end of the age. Yes, I said Adam. We love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord Jesus, come sooner than later and cover us by your blood. Fill us with your spirit and our loved ones, my daughters, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, guys, in about half an hour, Usama Dakdok and I are going live. Even though I schedule it for 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to do it 7.30 p.m. to give us enough time to chew this. Love you guys. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Thank you. And guys, thank you for the super chat. Lord bless you and preserve you.